Hello students, we are going to study the most interesting technique that is induced breeding in fishes. Induced breeding is the most significant advancement in the field of aquaculture to induce the reproduction in fishes. It is the technique whereby rife fish breeders are stimulated by the pituitary hormone or other synthetic hormones introduced to breed in captive conditions. The stimulation promotes timely release of sperms and eggs from ripe gonads. So when we want to define this, induced breeding is a technique by which the economical important fish generally do not breed in captive conditions are bred throughout the artificial stimulation. History regarding the induced breeding technique, this technique is was first evolved in Argentina after producing pituitary extract by Hase in 1930. Brazil was the first country to develop a technique for hypophysis in 1934. In India, first attempt to induce breeding was made by Hamid Khan in 1937 on Sirinus Mrigala. Dr. Hiralal Choudhury is the first person who applied this technique in minor calves in 1955. Parmeshwaran and Alkuni 1962 successfully breed to an exotic Chinese calf, as well as they also breed Indian major calf. Need of induced breeding Why we need this technique? Many cultural farm fishes like Indian major carp do not breed in captivity. Reason behind is that may be environmental and consequent hormones because all these Indian major carps breed in a flooded river. Certain environmental conditions like photo period, rain, temperature, currents of water and always insufficient release of hormone in captive condition which is a important for the induced breeding technique. Insufficient of natural food is also uh, one of the reason to use this induced breeding. Why induced breeding is necessary for the fish culture? It gives pure spawn of certain species of fishes under cultivation. It can fulfill any quantity of demand at any time. The technique is very simple, does not need too much technical assistance. Techniques involve number of steps. First step, removal of gland. Second, preservation of gland. Preparation of gland extract, injection to the brooders, doses and spawning. So collection of pituitary gland, how we collect the pituitary gland? Collection of pituitary gland made only from right, ripe gravid fish. Suitable period for the collection of gland of major carb is May to July. Gland of homoplastic species is more effective than the heteroplastic species. Gland to obtain from immature and spent fishes do not give a satisfactory result. Removal of gland. At the time of removal of gland, there is a gland can be removed through the foramen uh, magnum. The foramen magnum was first exposed by removing the vertebral part of the skull. Fat is removed first by means of forceps, then cotton piece. A pair of forceps then inserted into the foramen magnum, dorsally to the brain and anterior part of the brain now detached and it is carefully lifted out through the foramen magnum. The gland is then located and removed. So these are the instruments we are used for the removal of pituitary gland and whatever the concept I am explaining the how to extract the pituitary gland the fish next picture which can be shown here. Then preservation of pituitary gland, gland can be yes. Preservation of gland. Glands can be preserved in 100% ethyl alcohol. Acetone can be used for the preservation. Glycerin is also used as a preservation media. Gland is dried air by using blotting paper. So whatever the picture which can be show the preserved gland. Storage of pituitary gland. Glands are stored in 100 ml of alcohol at ordinary temperature. After each 24 hours, 100% alcohol is changed for further dehydration and fattening. The gland is stored in a refrigerator. Extract may also preserve in glycerin that is made up with the 3 ml of extract plus 1 ml of water and 2 ml of glycerin. Selection of brooders for induced breeding. The brooder should be healthy, fully ripe and medium size. The age group of the fish that is 2 to 4 years and have the weight about 1 to 5 kg suitable for the induced breeding. Large size breeders are avoided for the difficult difficulty in handling and how the injections can be given to the breeders. 
for intramuscular injection fish is laid on its side needle is inserted either on the its side or need is insert, needle is inserted either in the caudal peduncle or into shoulder for intraperitoneal the injections are given to the base paired pectoral fin so clinical needles are used for the injection that is number 19 22 24 are used for the breeders over 3 kg and 1 to 3 kg as well as 1 kg so this is the way how the injection is given to the brood fish and here you can see the picture of the intramuscular injection the needle is inserted in the caudal peduncle that is nothing but the intramuscular injection and the needle is inserted in the shoulder or the dorsal pectoral or dorsal base that is intramuscular injection so dose is, spe is specified for the fishes doses of pituitary gland extract female is given the preliminary dose of 2 to 3 mg per kg of body weight after an interval of 6 to 8 hours second dose of 5 8 mg 5 to 8 mg per kg body weight given to the female if first dose is not working then male give male get the 2 to 3 mg dose per kg of the body weight these are the number of synthetic hormones yes synthetic hormones also used for this and that is in the form of ovaprim and ovatide these are the number of uh, ovaprim and ovatide doses are available in the market and this is the uh, whatever the quantity of the doses for the fish synthetic hormone of ovatide that is example if katla katla is there there is a 0.4 to 0.5 ml per kg which is given to the female and 0.2 to 0.3 kg per ml per kg given to the male in labio rohita that is rohu that is 0.2 to 0.4 ml per kg and 0.1 to 0.2 ml and these are the in uh, another examples related with the synthetic doses in silver carp that is 4, 0.4 to 0.5 and in female and 1.1 to 0.2 in the male so another in that most important thing is the spawning after injection to the brooders a set of brooders are released into breeding huppa that is one race to two means one female and two males are added into that the huppa measures the range of 3 meter to 1.5 meter and 1 meter for breeders weighing 3 to 5 kg close mesh mosquito netting is preferred for that purpose as it is mesh will allow a good circulation of water will also not let the laid eggs and milt escape through the meshes the fertilized eggs are transparent pearl like unfertilized eggs are opaque or whitish so these are the huppa first one first picture is huppa where in the natural condition the spawning can be done and nowadays this modern techniques of hatchery which can be developed that is like a chinese hatchery indian hatcheries are developed by the scientist factors influencing influencing the induced breeding there is a number of factors which influencing the induced breeding that is climate water condition turbidity light and dissolved oxygen climate which is can be the should uh, 33 degrees celsius with the cloudy days and rainy period and water condition is a flowing water because most of the indian major carp which is bred in uh, flooding rivers turbidity is around 100 to 1000 mg per liter or ppm light is early maturation and spawning it is required oxygen uh, which can be dissolved oxygen should not be less than 5 ppm per liter and what is the major important why we are using this technique there is a number of advantages of the induced breeding the speed spawn pure spawn of the desired species is timely available for the farmers any quantity of pure spawn can be made available several carps attain sexual maturity in ponds but they do not breed in confined water such fish can be subjected to induced breeding and spawn can be collected it is commercial to obtain the spawn from the, from the induced breeding and last and best one that induced breeding technique is very simple and can be learned even by a layman so this is the most favorite uh, technique among the aquaculturist and this is the idea regarding the induced breeding technique thank you